this entitled mother is so determined to harass this ride worker that she's even willing to risk her child's life. Is there any limit to her insanity? Can anyone stop her? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the show. Last Christmas, I worked for a ride hire company casually, the sort of company that leased out carnival rides to school fairs, community events, that sort of thing. So I basically set up the rides, teapots, jumping castles, etc, and operated them, checking heights, and making sure kids had paid for unlimited ride wristbands or paid for single ride tickets. We were hired at a Christmas community event run by the local council. I was put on the dunk box. You know, that tank full of water where people throw balls at a target and try and dunk you? I was annoyed because I hate running this ride. You have to constantly reset the dunk board, and you get soaked with grotty, kitty filth water. Now now working in this industry you see your fair share of entitled parents, but this entitled mother was something else. So I had set up two lines for the ride. One line to throw a ball from behind a line at the target. Another line to sit on the board and get dunked by whomever was throwing it. This was by far the busiest event I'd ever worked at. And being that I'm from Australia, and it's like three days before Christmas, it was like 40 degrees Celsius. 104 Fahrenheit. And every kid wanted to try the dunk box. The line to get dunked was understandably massive. At least 50 to 60 kids. And it took like a good three minutes for someone to successfully dunk a kid with the ball. So the line obviously moved incredibly slowly. Anyway, after getting to about halfway through the day, I spotted this strange looking couple and their daughter skulking along the sides of the massive line to get dunked. At first I think nothing of it, but I saw them moving closer to the front of the line. These were by far the strangest parents I'd ever seen. The father had that spiky early 2000s, overly gelled smash mouth hair, and his eyebrows looked like they were drawn on, giving him this passively angry look. The mother was dressed in like a mare costume from the birth of Christ or something? She was actually like seven months pregnant. The entitled mother approaches me with her daughter, who is basically a toddler. She wouldn't have been more than two years old. She was absolutely tiny. Hi, can she go next? We're about to go home and she really wants to try this and the line is long. The kids at the front of the line, who'd probably been waiting way over an hour at this point in 40 degree heat, are notably ticked off. But don't say anything because big adults are always right. Hi, sorry man you'll have to wait in line. I can't let people skip unfortunately. Now the dunk box is like a two meters cubed box. If you're a tiny kid and you can't swim, you're probably gonna drown. I was specifically told by my boss not to let on the small ones anyway. He basically meant no toddlers or younger kids, so six and up. Besides miss, your daughter is way too small to get dunked, it's too dangerous. Please, please, it will only be quick and then we will go. I'm sorry miss, if someone gets hurt, I'm in trouble. My boss is in trouble, I just can't. And again, you can't push in line, please there's other kids waiting. At this point, I can see the parents of the kids waiting are getting even more impatient than them and start storming to the front of the line. I have to stress that this is Australia, we can't touch anyone, especially kids, or we could legit go to court. I'm just watching the parents storm up the line and trying to apologize to the kids. This filthy snake of an EM lifts up her daughter to the ladder and makes her climb it to the board. I eventually turn around and see that the kid is about to climb onto the board. Ah, uh, miss, what are you doing? I said she's too small and you have to get her down now. I hadn't set up the board yet, so it wasn't attached to the hook that held it up. So if the little girl sat on it, she'd immediately plummet into the tank. No, it's okay, she'll be fine, I'll get her out. Miss, please, the board isn't set up. The only way to get someone out of there would be to jump in there yourself. She was obviously pregnant and completely unable to do that. I looked at the weird Guy Fieri dad, but couldn't see him. By this point, a bunch of parents had come to the front of the line and began to witness what was happening. Since I can't touch anyone, I can't pull the mother back or pick up the kid from the ride, so I'm getting really genuinely scared and anxious. I called out for help from the parents who'd come to the front of the line, but all they did was angrily tell the mother to get the kid off, which was what I was doing. As the kid teetered on the edge, one of the bigger kids waiting in line, probably like 13 or 14 years old, climbed the ladder and grabbed the little girl under the armpits and pulled her back. I made the biggest sigh of relief. You let go! 
shadow of her let her have a turn. The bigger kid quite easily picked up the girl and gave her to her mother, then climbed down and waited at the front of the line. This kid was the biggest legend. He absolutely saved my butt. Are you going to let him do that? She screamed at me. I was just speechless at this point and looked at the parents to make sure I wasn't going crazy. I don't even... What? I couldn't fathom that somebody like this actually existed. Eventually, one of the parents threatened to call security and they all began to verbally abuse the EM until she fled the scene with her daughter. After it all died down, I let the big kid on the ride, genuinely thanking him as best as I could. He saved my butt from either a kid drowning or me having to touch someone and risk court. A good 15 minutes later, I saw the EM with her daughter and the guy Fieri walking towards another ride. They weren't even leaving. I just gave up, ignored it and continued to run my ride for the rest of the day. I have a friend, we're gonna call her Millie. As you might guess, she is mute, born that way, but her hearing is fine, so she can still understand me whenever I speak to her. She's a really chill and great girl overall. We've been friends for about five months now, and still is today. She communicates through sign language. I tried learning ASL to understand what she's trying to tell me. I'm still learning it, though I do know enough American Sign Language to hold a conversation with a deaf or mute person. So it all starts with a day without Millie. We went to a mall together, just the two of us, having a great time. We went to this one shop that sold these cool figurines and stuff. We found a fairly nice figurine of Aquaman, and having watched the recent Aquaman movie, she also bought it. She's more a fan of his costume though. I had to go use the washroom, so I told her I'd be gone for a little while, and she signed she'll wait by the seating area. It took me a while to get back out, because the faucets decided not to do their job that day, but I managed. But when I came out and searched for her, I was immediately alive armed with the sound of a wailing child. When I did find her, there was a lady and the crying child in front of her. The kid was having a weird breakdown and screaming, Mommy, I wanted that toy. Presumably, the lady was probably the child's mother, and thus she shall be called the entitled mother. And she was questioning my friend rather harshly and jabbing a finger at her chest, while Millie looks around mortified, wanting out of the situation. I immediately come to her aid and ask what's happening. Excuse me? Is there something wrong here? Why, yes. Your selfish friend here just shoved my son after she hugged that toy. Doing these stupid gestures. She refused to even apologize for it. I look at her and she shakes her head and signs. I did not shove him. He tried to take the figurine without my permission. I nodded and turned to the lady. Since people at the mall were staring at us, I tried to go about it as calmly as possible. One thing to note was that the entitled mother had a look of confusion on her face when my friend signed to me. Sorry, but there might have been a misunderstanding here. My friend here is mute. She must have been trying to tell you something, but was unable to because of it. She told me that she didn't give your son permission to play with her figurine, but he tried to take it away. She also told me she didn't shove your son. She didn't wish any harm on him. For some reason, the entitled mother overreacted and said, Excuse me? She gives me this nasty look and turns to Millie. I don't care if you're mute or whatever kind of stupid excuse that is. You're being selfish, bratty, not to mention immature teen. My son is just a kid and you wouldn't let him play with a toy? Meant for kids? What are you even going to do with a toy anyway? Apologize to me and my son. At this point I was like, what the heck? I was just completely appalled by this woman because apparently based on the reaction alone, it was pretty safe to assume that this entitled mother doesn't know what being mute is. Not to mention didn't know what basic manners are. Millie had the same look that I had and was pretty ticked off too at this woman. I responded pretty harshly to the woman after the remark. Did you not hear what I just said? She's mute. She can't speak. And why should she apologize for your son's bad behavior? Figuring that the entitled mother would probably get even more ticked off, she started freaking out on us, calling us obscene things, selfish, disrespectful, and rude teenagers. Her face was so red, it would probably put a tomato to shame. Then little freaking Timmy over here, the entitled child, starts to cry even harder. And guess who got even more angrier? My friend started to get really anxious due to the scene that the entitled mother 
was making. It wasn't long though until someone from the crowd that had amassed from the scene went and told a security guard. Thankfully the guard immediately came and told off the EM and stood in between us and her since she looked like she was about to throw hands with us. She eventually walked away, not without muttering more profanities and insults about us under her breath. The guard was a really kind dude. After the EM left, he reassured my friend who was a bit shaken up from the whole ordeal. After that, me and Millie went home and went about our ways. We still hang out at the same mall sometimes, though now she has to carry those cards that says she's mute, thanks to that experience. The justification that some entitled parents make for their bad behaviour often ignores all other social norms. In this case, for example, the mother tried to justify the child taking the figurine by saying, well, it's a child's toy and he's a child. But how on earth does that justify taking someone else's property without their consent? They always have these weird non sequiturs they use as the the reason to try and justify either bothering someone or taking their stuff. It's really simple lady. If you want your kid to play with the toy, you ask. You get her consent and if she says no, you find someone who will or you work hard and you buy a toy yourself for your son. You're not entitled to other people's property just because you have a child. So I'm in high school and I've been working at a grocery store as a cashier for about a year now. Now, I see and deal with a lot of BS from customers, but this particular story really grinds my gears. Note, I am generally really good with kids. I let them help, bag, and sometimes teach them how to ring. I let them stand on the mat with me. So it's a Sunday, just after church let out, and the store is packed and a bunch of corporate people are in the store because we had officially been open for a month. I am alone at the register, no bagger, just me. A mother, entitled, and her about three-year-old son get in line. When she starts putting her groceries on the belt, the son starts begging to be put on there too. I ignore it and continue the order I am on, assuming she has common sense and won't put her kid on the belt. I finish up the last order and turn towards her and, surprise surprise, see her son on the end of the belt. I turn off the sensor belt because I don't want the belt moving with the kid on it. Here's the interaction from there. Why did you turn the belt off? Because your son is sitting on it and I don't want him to get hurt. He won't get hurt. Turn the belt back on so he can ride it. Ma'am, I can't do that. Even if you believe he won't get hurt, it's still possible and I really don't want to be part of that happening. At this point, a manager is watching but hasn't intervened. He's not stupid. He won't get hurt. Other cashiers have let me do it before. Cool, please take your son off the belt and then we can start your order. Let me speak to your supervisor. I look over at my manager and gesture for him to come over. What is the problem ma'am? Your cashier won't let my son ride the belt while she rings up my groceries. That's bad customer service. Well, I am glad that she won't let your son ride the belt. He could get hurt. And as a company, we try to avoid preventable customer injuries in our store. Please take your son off the belt and she will gladly start your order. Put the stuff back. I'm reporting the store to corporate. You're in luck. Our front end corporate supervisor is in the store today. I'll go get him. I don't know if this is a common phobia or not, but whenever I see a child who's playing on something that clearly they shouldn't be playing on, I just have this internalized cringe of like, this is not going to end well. Normally a parent is supposed to be like overly cautious of their child. I don't get these parents who are constantly putting their children in danger. I used to work at Tim Hortons, which was absolutely awful. This is one of many entitled parents I had to deal with. I normally worked late evening shifts, but on occasion was put on days, which I was in this case. It was the lunch rush, which was a lot slower than usual. I was working cash doing my usual thing when the entitled mother comes up with her two demon spawn. They are running around, being loud and annoying other customers. She doesn't care. She orders two drinks and two sandwiches. No issues yet aside from annoying kids, which I was already used to as that happened often. She pays and shortly after receives her items. Instead of being seated or leaving, she stands there and waits. She looks increasingly more and more upset. Excuse me ma'am, is there a problem? Yeah, there is. I haven't gotten my third drink and sandwich. I know for a fact that she only ordered two of each. Oh, I'm sorry ma'am, I must have misheard you before. If you'd come back over to- She cut me off. No, I already paid and I want them now. My kids are getting upset. 
They are starving. I know she didn't, but okay. Can I see your receipt, please? You didn't give me one. I definitely did, but whatever. I can just check our own transaction log. Just a moment. I'll... She again cuts me off. No, my children are starving and you will feed them now. I tried to talk, but she won't let me. I am a single mother. You should do the right thing and just give it to me. My kids are hungry. She is now raising her voice even louder, basically yelling at this point. Both the children are getting upset since their mother is upset and yelling. I'm sorry miss, but I can't just... Cuts off again. Get my child this food now. The manager hears from the back and comes out. Hello miss, what seems to be the problem? Your employee refuses to give my child his food. I try to explain the situation to my manager. It took me a while as she kept trying to interrupt me. He tries to do the same thing. I did, which further upsets the mother. I don't have time for this. I'm a single mother. Can't you just give it to me? The manager tries to speak, but is interrupted again. Just give it to me like every other time. Stop wasting my time and give it to me. It came out that she had done this every week for who knows how long. She came same time each week during the rush. It'd be very busy. No one bothered to check and just gave it to her to save time. No one noticed because the job sucked and we went through new employees like tissues. So no one remembered her. My manager has a short fuse and is pretty upset at this point. He was going through a divorce with our other manager. So he was basically angry all the time. The entitled mother starts shouting at us about how her children are going to starve and it's all our fault. She's even louder. The kids start squealing and crying. The manager is done with it. He gets up in her face and tells her to leave. I could tell it was taking everything he had not to totally snap. The mother is taken back and is upset but quiets down. We think she's done. It was then that a sandwich was put out for another customer. She immediately grabs it. We try to tell her it's not hers but she's not having it. My son needs it more so I'm taking it. Before we do anything she grabs her kids and books it. After that I was back on my usual shift. I was told she tried it again next week but they were ready. They kicked her out and banned her. The following week she's back but goes through the drive through as if that'd make a difference. Apparently my other manager confronted her in the parking lot. They had a screaming match until police were called. Don't really know if much came of that. I do know that she never came back. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.